In construction, a request for information seeks the clarification of plans, drawings, specifications and agreements. The construction RFI is a formal written process in which parties such as the contractor and designer clarify information gaps in construction documents. The number of RFIs on projects can run into several thousands and can lead to cost and delay issues. We have data set for six projects, four projects are completed and two projects ongoing. The total number of RFIs is 1979, which should enable us to have better insight. I'm a project manager on an accommodation project in London on the design and build contract that is just about to commence. I want to understand if a higher number of RFIs in my project will have a negative impact on the delivery of my project. Using historical data from similar projects, can you help me understand the predicted volume, nature and timing of the RFI so I can plan and take appropriate action and also track against actual progress and take relevant action where required? Hi Simon. Yes, we can help you. We can create an interactive dashboard that forecasts based on value, sector, duration. We can also create a reactive view that allows you to identify and understand the risks, ideal trends, relationships between external factors. One of the ways we've gone about looking to achieve the vision that we've set out was by building a correlation forecasting model within Python, with the idea of this being that you would be able to enter certain business or project factors into this that would then give you a kind of trajectory of kind of where you should see your RFIs hitting your project um, on its relevant time scale. This would then allow you to kind of complete benchmarking exercise to understand if you're ahead or behind the curve. It's an early proof of concept model that at the moment requires more data to validate its viability. As the next step, we develop an interactive dashboard with two views. The first view is an actual versus forecast analysis where it is overlaid a forecast projection of RFIs and the actual progress on the knife project. This will help the project manager who could spot any negative trends and mitigate any risk, present risk on a live project. The second view shows us a root cause analysis where it is shown the performance of different work packages across multiple projects. This will help the project manager who could identify the problematic work packages and implement any corrective measures in any of the live work packages. We compared RFI performance on two live projects with data from closed projects with similar characteristics to understand if the two live projects are not performing as expected. Scenario number one, in this scenario at approximately 40% progressed, the design was coordinated and subcontractor shop drawings were well progressed and we can see the flattening of the curve. By comparing against the benchmark, we established the project is ahead of the curve and with the design progressed, it is anticipated that fewer RFIs are still to raise, therefore the project is low risk. In scenario number two, the project is currently at 50% and we know that although design is complete, there are a large number of trade contractors yet to be appointed and design to be completed. By comparing against the benchmark where the curve flattens at around 55%, we establish that although the actual curve has flattened, the curve is behind the forecast of RFIs expected at this stage with a potentially large number of RFIs still to raise. Therefore, the project is at higher risk. As it was demonstrated during the presentation, we are able to evaluate negative trends on actual project data and provide focus on certain work packages using past project data. Based on the data analysis, we identify gaps in the data that prevent us to provide further impact. This means in data sets will allow us to identify the cost and program impact, as well as correlate to the project chain process. Based on findings from the analysis, you can see from the data that the volume of RFIs levels off at around 55% of the project program. Therefore, I need to ensure that all packages are appointed and subcontractor design is complete before the project reaches around 45 to 
I can also see what designers and work packages need particular focus and therefore I can plan my resource accordingly. The obvious benefit from obviously combining the RFI data from the other challenges is obviously having a bigger pool of data that we've been able to use to validate our theories against. But one of the more interesting ones of we'd be able to identify if issues related to RFIs were the same across different businesses um, in the construction industry, or if each organization had its own systemic issues um, in relation to RFIs that could happen at different points or in relation to different factors. So to develop this further um, in the next hack, I think having those combined data sets um, would be really beneficial, but it would also be looking to see, can we also include any program or cost data in conjunction to those, as well as change management data, to see if there's any real added consequences that we get from high volumes of RFIs being created, potentially at different points in a project or by different work packages that have a knock-on effect in the longer term. The metrics that we've used to try and quantify that relationship, if there is one between uh, RFIs and design performance on a project, one of the most interesting one is obviously looking at the time um, to respond to RFIs and sort of if they're going overdue by how long, which obviously shows that there's potentially a key problem in the process or the handling of those RFIs um, that if it, that was brought forward and done in a more timely manner, it potentially closes out those issues a lot sooner um, and with then obviously as a byproduct less impact on the projects. Particular correlations that stood out um, between kind of project factors uh, and RFI performances was that there's a factor that people seem to like to apply a high priority um, to an RFI um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's true, but it doesn't seem to have an impact on the amount of responses um, to what's given to a particular RFI.